Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a range of power over Ethernet ZigBee coordinators from ZM Lite and how they can replace your existing ZigBee coordinator to strengthen your network so you get maximum coverage across your home and avoid devices dropping off your network. We'll also have a giveaway for an SL ZB06 PoE coordinator. Now we're going to be limiting this to the Australian audience as they missed out on the ASU Video Doorbell Ultra competition. Details later in the video. We'll be looking at the SM Lite 06 range of PoE coordinators, but SM Lite also sell the more usual USB powered coordinators, and we'll cover those in a future video. We'll take you through what a PoE coordinator is, why you should use one, the differences between the various different models in the range, and why you should pick up one model over another. Then we'll install one coordinator for ZHA and another for Zigbee and add a device to both to make sure they are functional. Then we'll round off with a conclusion as to which of these PoE coordinators is best for you. PoE or Power Over Ethernet coordinators are powered by the Ethernet, which allows for more versatile installations. You can attach the coordinator anywhere on your network. This is particularly useful for larger homes or buildings where the coordinator needs to be centrally located for optimal signal coverage, but can be located a distance away from the home assistant instance, but still have a LAN with a power over ethernet connection. However, they do need a special type of LAN that provides power from the switch or the router, or they need a power injector to provide power to the LAN connection. Although in this case, SM Lite will also allow you to power the device via the USB-C socket if you don't have a PoE network available. The full range of the SM-ZL06 has six different coordinators available, but we'll be focusing on three of these. The range has excellent documentation and walks you through the various installations and configuration options. Check out the links in the description. The SL-ZM06 is the base model and comes with the Texas Instruments CC2652P chipset. It features a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.2, Thread and Zigbee radios. It's the oldest chipset in the range with the least memory. It supports up to 200 devices and is one of the most stable firmwares having no reported issues that I could find. The SLZM06 P7 is another model based on the Texas Instruments CC2652 with the same featured radios as the older SLZM06 model, but is a newer model, boasting an increase in RAM of the 06 model from 88 kilobytes up to 152 kilobytes and flash memory from 352 kilobytes to 704 kilobytes, but it also supports up to 200 devices. Our third coordinator is the SLZM06M, which is the newest of the range and uses the EFR32MG24 chipset from Silicon Labs. It has the same featured radios as the 06 model. As it's a different architecture, the flash memory and RAM figures are not directly comparable, but the 06M has 1536 kilobytes of flash memory and 256 kilobytes of RAM and also supports 200 devices. All three coordinators have the same form factor and come with a USB-C socket for direct connection or power supply and an impressive plus 20 dB internal amplification and a plus 5 dB antenna which gives excellent range results. Plus you get the added advantage that all devices are based on ESP32 so you can add Bluetooth proxy effectively extending your Bluetooth network range while maintaining its Zigbee coordinator functionality. All of the 06 range come with Matter support with the latest firmware that you'll need to upgrade to by using the over-the-air update feature that we'll cover later. I'm going to be connecting the SLZB06 coordinator to my PoE LAN network, but the process is the same across the full range. The coordinator can be used in a few different configurations, such as a Wi-Fi coordinator that is not connected to your PoE network, but instead is connected to Home Assistant via Wi-Fi and then connects to your Zigbee devices. But as the prime reason for buying such a device is to use the PoE capabilities, I'm going to be connecting it to my PoE network. Once plugged in, navigate to the coordinator dashboard. You can use the links in the description as the naming convention is common across the whole range. 
The dashboard is consistent across the full SM Lite 06 range of PoE coordinators, making it easy to support and understand. The first screen shows you an overview of the dashboard, showing you important information such as the mode of operation, which in this case is Zigbee to Ethernet, the IP address of the coordinator, or the firmware of the Zigbee radio and the ESP32. Moving to the mode screen, here we can change the radio modes. Changing the radio modes will flash the appropriate firmware to the coordinator. You can also use the coordinator as a router, which will extend your Zigbee network. It's great to see that this can be installed by simply toggling a switch and installing the firmware via the screen. If you'd like to see a video on how to configure the SLZB06 to any of the radio modes and enable Bluetooth proxy, then let me know in the comments. This might be a good time to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to be notified of similar content when it becomes available. Then you get Matter Over Thread, which at the time of filming is experimental and only works with USB, so use with caution. And finally, as this is an ESP32 device, you can set up a Bluetooth proxy. Selecting this option will give you a warning. We have three options, Bluetooth proxy only, or you can use Bluetooth proxy plus Zigbee, or Bluetooth proxy plus matter over thread. But remember that this will only work with a USB connection. Using any of these options means you lose access to the dashboard, as this changes the firmware to ESP Home. You can always go back by using the SM Lite flasher, links in the description. Just plug in your coordinator by using a USB-A to USB-C cable, select your firmware you wish to flash, and press the flash button. Moving on to network, the default is set to DHCP, which means that the IP address of your coordinator is set by your router. You have the option to set this from within the coordinator. However, it is highly advisable to control all IP allocations in a central place, and that's your router. If you set within applications, then you can quickly get out of control and potentially have conflicting IP addresses, which are difficult to identify and resolve. Reference your router documentation on how to do this. Next, we have the Zigbee to MQTT and ZHA. The top section of this screen is informational only and gives you suggested options that you can use for the configuration of ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT. We'll cover this later in the video. Below this are two important pieces of information, the speed at which the serial port communicates and the socket port. Although the serial can go up to 460,800, it is recommended for stability to leave this at the default of 115,200, which is still quick enough and you'd not see any appreciable speed difference from a user perspective. The port is standard across all of the 06 range, and this will be used in the ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT configuration, so you should not change, unless you are an advanced user and have a specific reason to change. In the security menu, you can turn off the web server, which means that after pressing save, the dashboard would not be available. You'd need to factory reset the device if you wish to change any of the configuration, so be careful with this option. Then you get the basic authentication option, meaning that you'd need to provide a username and password to gain access to the dashboard. This is the option that most will select. Or you can enable a whitelist, which means that only certain IP addresses or ranges of addresses can access the dashboard. Then we have a VPN option. This is a really interesting option, where you can set up the coordinator at a remote location, such as a holiday home. Then use the coordinator to control your Zigbee devices at the remote location as if they were within range of your main Zigbee network at home. This is an advanced option, and I'll put the links to the documentation in the description below. If you'd like a video specifically about how to do this, then let me know in the comments. This is a topic that SM Lite are really proud of, and this simple implementation is unique to the SM Lite products as far as I know. Then we come to the general settings. Here you can change the name of the device that you will see in your router. You have restart controls for your Zigbee radio, ESP32 and router. Now if you are security minded and don't like to use the cloud or share your analytics, then you need to be aware of the default for the 06 range of sending your non-sensitive information back to SM Lite. Now I share my analytics with Home Assistant, but you might like to deactivate this option. In the firmware update section, you can check and upgrade the firmwares of the ESP32 plus the Zigbee radios, plus flash custom firmwares. Then you have the option to configure the automatic update of the Zigbee radio, although I would not recommend this, and instead control this yourself and make sure that everything updates successfully and reconnects. 
And finally, you get to turn off the LEDs on the device or even schedule them to turn off, along with setting the time and viewing the system logs. Now let's install and configure the SLZB06 for ZHA. Remember that you can only have one coordinator for ZHA, so make sure any other coordinator has been deleted prior to installation. Press the link in the description for add ZHA integration. Make sure that the Home Assistant IP address is correct and use the pencil to the right of the IP address to modify it if needed. Press open link. Now press OK to confirm the installation. The device serial path that was picked up for me was incorrect. As such, press enter manually and press submit. Select ZNP for the Texas Instruments stack. Press submit. Now switch back to your SLZB06 dashboard and navigate to the Zigbee to MQTT and ZHA menus. Select ZHA. Copy the serial device path. Switch back to Home Assistant. Paste a serial device path into the available field. As we are using the coordinator over a LAN, there is no requirement for data flow control. Simply press Submit. Now as we're going to be setting up a new network, select Arrays Network Settings. Home Assistant will report success and bring back the Zigbee devices it has discovered. Optionally give these an area and press Finish. Now let's check our coordinator has been added. Search for and select ZHJ. Now select the devices. You'll see your Zigbee network is up and running. Now let's add a Zigbee device to make sure the coordinator is working. Press Add Device in the bottom right hand corner. Put your device into pairing mode. Once paired, give it a name and optionally an area. Opening and closing the contact sensor quickly reports through the SLZB06. And we're done! Now let's set up the 06M with the Zigbee to MQTT. Now this does involve some additional components. So if you don't have a Zigbee to MQTT set up already, then watch the video in the pop-up above. Alternatively, as Zigbee to MQTT can support multiple coordinators, you can watch the video in the pop-up above to set this up. I'll assume that you have already installed Zigbee to MQTT components and are adding the 06M as a new coordinator. Navigate to Settings, Add-ons, select Zigbee to MQTT. Now press Configuration in the top menu. Now this is the old configuration from the coordinator that I was using, but we'll be replacing the serial information. Open a new browser tab and navigate to the 06M using the link in the description. Then navigate to the Zigbee to MQTT and ZHA. Copy the YAML code. Navigate back to your home assistant. Press the three dots in the top right hand corner. Select Edit in YAML. Replace the serial section with the code that you just copied. Now press Save for the section. Navigate to the Info tab. Make sure that Watchdog and Show in Sidebar are shown. And press Start. Once paired, select your device and navigate to the Exposes menu. Opening and closing the contact sensor reports virtually instantly. And we're done! So the SM Lite 06 range of coordinators. Should you buy them, consider them or skip them? As with most devices that I review on this channel, there is usually a user case where a device will fit with someone. The SM Lite 06 range is feature rich, offering features that many manufacturers don't have or could only achieve with extensive knowledge and configuration, such as the VPN option. The ease of flashing the firmware over the air makes this device a very attractive for both novices and the tech savvy. The ability to quickly and easily enable Bluetooth proxy makes this a very easy coordinator to configure, and having the fallback of the SM Lite flasher to recover your precious coordinator if you do something wrong is a welcome addition. The main issue with these coordinators is not if you should buy one, but which one should you buy. SM Lite offers six different PoE coordinators in the 06 range, each with their own specific key features. Now SM Lite understand this issue and they have provided a table in their home page that gives you a handy reference as to which one you should buy. Now this might look complex, so let me give you my advice for 99% of you that are looking for a PoE coordinator. If you want a rock steady performance, full functionality and are not planning on using custom firmware, then pick the SLZB06. It's the cheapest and yet gives you everything you'll need. If you want the latest and greatest with a firmware that's not as mature but will in time, then pick the SLZB06M with its Silicon Labs chipset. 
the same rich functionality, but a little bit more expensive. Or pick both and run one for ZHA and one for Zigbee to MQTT. Links in the description if you want to pick one up. And finally, the giveaway for the channel's Australian audience. Make sure you are subscribed, like the video, and leave a comment as to how you would use your SLZB06 Zigbee PoE coordinator from SM Lite in your smart home. Make sure you include in your comments the hashtag hash SM Lite. I'll do a draw in a month's time and announce the winner in the community posts. Good luck, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then hit that like button, comment, and share. And if you want access to similar material, then subscribe or maybe become a channel member and get early access to material plus other perks. And if I've helped you make a purchasing decision, then maybe a super thanks or a PayPal donation. It's really appreciated. Thank you.